All right. Hey, so many people here. Uh, I want to say something before I start my talk. Uh, the first of all, uh, this is my first beacon, and I want to share my first impression of it. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Blender team to make all of this happen and gathering all the people all or from all around the world and combining it into one. And I mean, <laughs> gathering everyone into one place in this beautiful building, Felix Meritis, in this beautiful country of Amsterdam. And it's really nice to see all of you in here. Thanks for uh, coming to my talk. And this is also my first talk in English. And <laughs> I, I will need your support. <laughs> yeah, so my talk is about level up by creating a short film. I think we should start it right now. Um, first of all, who am I? Let me introduce myself first. My name is Norbek Nurlambekula. And I work as animation director in Ara Studios. Uh, yeah, the Ara Studios, you might be thinking, that name kind of sounds like English, but it's not really. What does it mean? Uh, we're, I'll explain it later. But we're a studio from Kazakhstan, actually. Uh, we're from Kazakhstan, and we traveled all the way here uh, to present you my talk. And if you, for those, for those who don't know where the Kazakhstan is located, it's located right in the center of the Eurasia, where we have um, Russian beer on top and the Chinese dragon, should I say, on the east, and all the Central Asian country beneath us. And uh, we actually came here last year, but uh, technically this is our second beacon, but not really, because uh, we couldn't get in previous year because uh, we bought uh, the plane tickets and booked the hotels first and then we forgot to buy the tickets for the for the beacon so that's why that's why we couldn't get in but we made it this year and uh, just for the just for the history we we were outside and thankfully Pablo was out and we had a speech with him and it was fortunate that he was there that day. And we made some photos. And that's pretty much it. And why am I here, you, if you're wondering? Uh, I've been very uh, having the opportunity to come here to show how our movie was made. Uh, we made the movie called Shrak. I'll talk about that later on. And uh, I want to show not show, but share our experience of the very chaotic, chaotic of the production pipeline was really chaos back when we made the film. And let's share the experience with you and talk about a little bit about us, the Ara Studios, who I was mentioning. The Ara means bees in our language. It's in Kazakh, means bees, Ara. Uh, why the bees? because they have their own mission, their own principles. I'm going to talk about it later on. And here are, here's our reel. I think it would be best to show our reel first and then talk about the studio later on. And here it is.
Well, that was cut off. That was a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I think I used the wrong video for that part. Well, it's okay. Well, uh, so far, this is our portfolio, uh, the projects that we worked on. Uh, the first one, everything began with a short film called The Dog. And later on, we were busy with a ch uh, children's TV series, cartoon series called Sabi. And later on, we made the film called Shrak. And uh, our talk is going to be about Shrak. And, and that Golden Ties is what we're currently busy with. And there's one mysterious project that we're going to reveal today. And we're going to show a little bit of teaser to show our progress all these years. All right, then. Uh, you know, there's a saying that's, that's like making a film is just like riding a train while you're building railroads under you at the same time. Well, it was, it was true, actually, <laughs> because uh, back then we didn't know a lot of things. And we're all like, let's say, in a gamer's language, we were noobs back then. And we tried to do everything as perfectly as possible, but we didn't have enough knowledge that time. And the, the methods I'm going to show you are all outdated <laughs> because the movie was made in 2020. And we somehow used Blender 2.8 back then. Started, yeah. The next one is this. This is our, um, I would say, if you're going to be sitting here for like 15 minutes, I think 15 minutes was given to me, I'm going to plan out and say that we have 12 points of talk and 12 big topics, and we, we're going to go through everything. And currently, we, the first one, we're in the first one. Let's get into the second one, then. We call it the beginning. The reason I'm doing this is because uh, since the level up, I mean the level up, uh, usually associates with a gaming term. So uh, it'd be fun to make my talk kind of similar to the gaming itself. So. That's why I made this. So you guys can have fun while learning something, maybe. Yeah, the beginning. Where did this idea come from? And why are we making it? And uh, what is this project? All right. The first one is, what is this project? This is the project called Shrak. And uh, let me get into the premise. Premise is a, oh, hmm, you can read it, or if you are not are lazy, I can just explain it to you. Uh, basically, it's the perspective to human worlds from the candles perspective. Is that a right word? <laughs> uh, it's like, what if candle had an emotions? And what if he was alive and was in our world? What would he see? So uh, you were like, you may be like, well, that's kind of interesting, but what inspired you to do that? Well, the first thing I want to go through is, um, you know, the, those people that you speak, but he doesn't respond to you. They're just, uh, their face is pale white and they don't talk to you. No, not, not this one, but, but zombie people. Yeah, zombie people, but not that one, but this ones. They're stick to the phones. You can't just separate them. You say something and they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, 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 I listen to you, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But you're saying something important to them, but they're not listening. They're not there. So we're like, mm, maybe this one would be a good idea to make some short film about this. And everything started from that. And let's say uh, how to cure this kind of people. Uh, the first thing came to, my, to our mind was, what if we turned everything off? like the electricity, the, the devices, and everything, and what would happen to those people? Well, the answer is they start to communicate with each other, like the speech, and they have, they're facing each other and speaking like human being, not like the, the sp sending the texts. They're alive. So we're, this was our first idea of making this film. And this particular event inspired us to make a short film based on this. All right then, why making it? Uh, what was the goal of the project? Uh, back then, our team was really, uh, how should I say, full of enthusiasm. 
they wanted to do everything. They wanted to try, learn it, something and crush it with those knowledges. But uh, we didn't have a new project that is dedicated for that. Uh, we were making um, the Sabi, the cartoonish, the kids movie, uh, TV series. Uh, and we craved for some challenge. And we wanted to do what we love. That is the animations that we want to create with the team itself. So uh, we wanted to make, we were really inspired by the Pixar's and Disney's animation style. And we were looking at them like, what if we tried to do that? And that's the beginning of this project. And we test out to, yeah, the, the, another reason is to test out our team's strength and knowledge. Back then we were having like 10 to 12 people working on the, on the studio. And of course, the other one is share our work with everyone. And the most important of them all is tell a story. And while telling the story, everyone could relate to, or at least feel the emotion that we're going to present. Okay, let's talk a little bit about our team. The power of friendship. That's a little bit of cliche naming, but I think it works fine for this part. All right, the first thing is meet the team. Uh, as you can see here, we draw, drew some <laughs> bees. I think that would be, that would be me or director. <laughs> this is our current team. We have like 23 people working in our studio. But back then we had only like seven or 12, seven to 12 uh, members of the team. And this is what glued us together. This is, this were our core principles and mission. Uh, our principles were benefit to society. We have to do something good and share it with everyone. And the cleanliness, it means uh, our work should be done with a clean uh, heart. We should do everything from our, what we feel. And the unity, it means we have to be together in this. Even if it's hard or it's not so hard, we have to be sticking together. And hard work and professionalism. And our mission was to make, not was, but still is, to make uh, very helpful projects that can move society and to at least uh, help the person that requires requiring it. Okay, so we want, decided to make a short film, but why we were so confident on making a film, like short film? Why isn't it just a, like little tests or just animation tests? We were like, yeah, if you gonna make something better, good, Let's just do it uh, with a team. By that, we can test out our everything and, and test out our unity. Uh, this two, the upper one was the, was the scenes from the, the doc, the short film. And the second one is from the TV series that we made back then. And we, have, we were like, mm, yeah, we're doing this kind of stuff. And why not make something new? and try out our strength and learn something new. And we started to challenge ourselves. And here starts the journey after that. It's, uh, in this part, I'm gonna talk about the pre-production phase of the, of the project. It's, it's really chaotic. I'm gonna explain it why. First, the visualogy, visual, <laughs> Visualization of the film and planning. I'm going to talk about the art style of the film. At first, we decided to make the film on the 2D, traditional 2D. And that's because we watched this film. It's called The Clouds. And we were really inspired from this. Everything, every shot was very warm and really rich on the colors. And somehow we were fan of the classic style of animation, like traditional type of animation. You know, those back on those days where um, animators just take the, the, the paper and just roll through it, and it gave some kind of life to that drawings. 
we wanted to feel something like that. And by watching this film, we were going to decide the art style of our film. That was two words that describes our art style. It has to be cozy and it has to be nostalgic, which means if no one experienced the thing that we show in our movie, they should at least feel these two, uh, two types of emotion in them. So our director just went out and, make, uh, and made his little previous of the film. Okay, you can see the rest of those in the, in the future, I think, but we're not going to release it. <laughs> the, okay, uh, this is what the director showed us and said, it's just a five-minute short film. Let's make it. It's just five minutes. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's do it. And we were like, yeah, let's go. And we started to storyboard it. Uh, we had this whiteboard in our studio, and we drew a little scribbles, like, what kind of movie is this, and what should we do, and were the characters in the right place. And this is the storyboard of the film, and we turned it into the digital one. This is the very first vision of the film. You can see the house, yeah, everything was in place, kind of. And this is the shortened version of the storyboard, actually. It was like 10 pages. So I just took the very uh, important parts and just made a collage. As you can see, the person, uh, the the characters weren't at the at their final stage. The designs weren't on, weren't on the page, um, weren't the final. But the story was there. Uh, as you can see, at the end, the the candle survives. He lives on. And we were drawing the characters' designs parallel to that. Uh, you can see the moms, the son, the daughter, the father. They were just like the stylized version of the, of the real Kazakhs in our <laughs> country. And these guys were really trouble, trouble, uh, problematic, I would say. Because at first we thought like maybe the, the candle is fine and the cat is also great. Okay, baby might be a little bit trouble, but let's go. And we did a little bit of testing of the animation itself. This were our animation tests back in the, the 2D parts, 2D animation tests. And then one day, director was looking at all of those results and like storyboards, animatics, and one day he came to us and said, let's add 20 minutes more. <laughs> and that's me. <laughs> I'm like, why? Why 20 minutes more? And he was like, reasons behind the 25 minutes. The, there was no story. There was no drama. Like, the candle just lit up, sees the people, okay, and then goes to the little, little guy, and then everyone just gathers together, and then it just, it just ends. All right, we said, okay, let's add a little bit of salt here, a little bit of... Uh, little bit of spice and the characters are not interesting enough like we didn't even develop each character's arc main character arc was weak uh, the scandal was not sticking together with us emotionally I would say also we need a meaningful ending mm, you might be thinking okay a meaningful ending what is that uh, you'll see when you you watch our film yeah <laughs> Most of the people didn't like the, mini, uh, the ending, but yeah, I think it's fine. It's, it's, it did its job. All right, then. Uh, when we were doing all of our tasks, one bright day, our producer and the director came to us. We had a serious talk. They sit there and were like, okay, 
2D is good, but you know what? We're losing time, and our 2D is really working against us, and it's a losing game. And that was kind of hard to take. And later, later that day, after right after he said that we need to change our decision, it rained. <laughs> Just really dramatic, you know? So this was the reason why we were going to change the production itself. It was really time-consuming to the and lacking of the team members. We didn't have enough uh, staff to do the all the 2D kind of animation. And it's expensive pleasure, to be honest. And everyone has a variable styles, and we didn't really know the pipeline of the 2D animation itself. Uh, so we decided to change everything. So that's when the Blender showed up. We were like, OK, you know, we know the Blender. And maybe the Blender production can save us. We were like, OK, let's change the whole production. And yeah, that's when we started to learn Blender a little bit more. So the new pipeline, it was the task that set by the director saying, OK, we're going to change the production, but we have to make the feeling the same as the 2D. Like everyone watched our film and they should get the two emotions that we were aiming for. That is coziness and... Uh, oh, sorry, my, my man just... <laughs> yeah, it's nostalgia and coziness. It have to deliver that. Next up, we put our everything into this and we became super Saiyans. Like literally, yeah. Every day we come into the office like, oh, let's learn. And then we start to watch every kind of tutorials, asking everyone there. And that's when uh, we decided to maybe talk with the Blender Studio staff and maybe look at their films. How are they doing movies? And back then, our main source of uh, info was from the settlers. And while we were developing the settlers, uh, I mean, uh, the, our movies looking at settlers, we had Coffee Run and then Sprite Fright. By looking at Sprite Fright, we took a lot of things from them, like we tried to mimic what they were doing, and we kind of tried like our own stuff. We, we were moving, moving, I mean, making something that we like. And the clock is ticking. We have to show something. The result needs to be here as soon as possible. And we started to get a little bit crazy with the time. And the results weren't that bad. We had modeled every character and textured it. And this is the topology. Somehow in the modeling part, we were kind of, since we were uh, going through everything fast, we decided this was the best approach for the character modeling. And uh, the reason that girl isn't painted is because we had to say goodbye to her. Because uh, her name was Asel, by the way, Asel. Uh, removal of her was kind of making our task easier. She didn't do anything to the story if we remove them. And having her means we have to recur, we need to paint her and render the scenes, which is a lot of time. So we didn't want to lose a lot of time, so we decided to just cut her. <laughs> okay, then somehow we were looking for some kind of effect that like it's candle, okay? It's, since it's candle, we were looking for like maybe some kind of technique we can apply that uh, liquid kind of effect. Like if his arm goes into this body, we need to have feeling that it's connected to his body. And then I came up with the idea that we should make his body with metaballs. And that was kind of wild decision, to be honest. I didn't know it, uh, it, it had a lot of pros and cones. As you can see here, we were tweaking his body, and this is what rig was made. I was uh, rigging itself, uh, rigging it myself, and then animating it also. What you see, what you see currently is um, the rig that's made with metaballs somehow. I didn't know the metaballs was really hard to rig. Uh, you can see how it was made right here, I think. Yeah, these were all meta balls. I don't know the right way to approach it, so I made what was working back then. 
yeah, it's it's like hundreds of metabolites in one place. Yeah, I have to put every single bone in one in the <laughs> individual metabol and somehow connect it with the spline IK. And the mouth was first of all like this, and it was working with the booleans. This was taken by the method of the settlers. We were like, no, maybe we should do with a boolean. But apparently boolean was taking a lot of our uh, viewport rendering power. So we decided later on to cut it. Rigging, okay, my favorite part. And also my uh, not so favorite part. This was what our animators see. And we took the autoric pros body and made facial rigs by hand. Back then, uh, thank you, thanks to Demeter Zadig's uh, rain rig, I was inspired to make kind of like rig that imitates the rain. It was like this. I, I've created every single this kind of chain, and it moved together with the with the controllers that animators move. But it wasn't a great idea. Uh, I kind of regret right now. I would do everything different if I would approach it to get, uh, again. And we have to make animations and the shaders work. This was our first test. As you can see, the candle isn't even in his own character. It somehow was different character back then. This was all working with uh, the metal metaball rig. Right now I'm feeling like I was so dumb back then. <laughs> I shouldn't just use, should just use meshes. And this character was our first that was rigged right, and we put it in the production without rig testing. Uh, we were looking at these results and like, oh, maybe this should work. Let's take this and go into the production. Okay, this was what producer said. It's no time. Let's go to the production, and we had nothing to track our track our process, and we decided to take the easiest part, which is Excel. Yeah, uh, everything was tracked with the Excel. Uh, we didn't have Kitsu or any kind of other things back then. And this is what worked, and we had to follow everything and feel everything. Every animator should feel his uh, data, uh, like I'm making this shot, don't take it, and I'm finishing this work on this time. It's, it's chaos. All right then, let's get into the production phase. What our production was like. First of all, we decided to see at the characters. We didn't know the scale was a problem. As you can see, uh, the characters on the 2D looks kind of all right, but when we made it in the 3D, it was like this. And this is what regular Rigify was like comparing to them. Uh, the reason behind this was, again, me. Uh, I tried to make a metaballs I tried to make candle with metaballs, and somehow when you scale down the metaballs itself, it kind of got a little wobbly and very low resolution. I'm not sure if it's corrected right now, but back then it was like that. So we scaled up everything comparing to him. Yay! Right now the, the Murat's height is like a two floor, three floor building, I think. <laughs> it's really t he's really tall. And this is what default cubes look like comparing to them. And we decided to cut the meta ball rig. It was really working against us. First of all, it's no smooth. It's not smooth while we, do, we did the shadings. And the models become really heavy. And rig is also very heavy because we were using like every single meta ball has its own individual rig, like every bone. Uh, and size also needed to be big so the resolution works properly. And right now, currently, uh, we faced uh, I mean, we changed it to the new model, which is the polygon model. It means a uh, new rig. It means redoing all the previous animations. We have to just wipe everything out and start all over again. Hooray. But this was what we were getting. Polygon model was a little bit lighter. And the new rig was also kind of lighter, but it, was, it had a lot of controls. So we had the freedom to make the, the cartoony effects was very good compar uh, compared to the metable model. 
And since we changed everything to the polygon, it has no reason to be that big, but since we did characters first, and later the, the areas was also scaled up environments, so they have no reason to be that big right now, but they'll, they're left like that <laughs> for no reason. So I put the three rigify there just to show you the scale. It, it was, yeah, it was a mistake. And then, so since the scale was a problem, we also had something like this. We had to cheat for the scene uh, when he is like walking around and like this character is going up, but apparently he is like this. There is supposed to be a there's supposed to be a ladder, but his body is just cutting the ladder. Oh, this one is my favorite. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> if you look at this, it's like it goes down, but apparently it's not. It's like the visual illusion. So uh, let's start the animations then. We decided to start from the actings. Like we made the animatics first. And this is what it looked like. Like, if you can see, the character is like mm, doing his work, and his son come to, comes towards him and says, I don't understand this. Can you please help me? And he's like, Ah, oh, okay, I got it. And then the, his boss just calls. I mean, his work needs to be done. And he's like, Nah, I don't have time. No, take, the, take this and go away. Do, do it yourself. And we, of course, did the references. This is me back then, like three years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it looks kind of like, okay. Well, back then we had uh, this question. If it moves, we have to look at how does it move? And then why does it move specifically that way? We have to understand these three questions right. So uh, after this, we tried other take. Like this one was the layout, or should I say the planning stage. Yeah, he looked at him and he's like, hey, hey, help me with this. And he's like, oh, okay, let's take a look. And that's it. Okay, I think I'm running low on time. I should speed up. And the human psychology is so complicated. We have to do everything and we have to think everything through and get into the depth of the character and implement those, all of the characters, personality and everything else. And this was the final result. He's like, hey, and he's like, ah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be disturbed, but okay. He's like, ah, no, I don't wanna look at that, but I have to work to do my son, but okay, I'm a good dad. Okay, let me see. And then he's like, he really respects his father, but he's afraid of him. It's like, okay, what do we have here? Oh, I get it. It's apparently very easy to do. But then his boss calls and just... Yeah, rest is just like this. And he's like, oh, take this, take this book. Like, hurry up. <laughs> I'm really proud of that part. Okay, the characters' faces. We, as the previous talk was said, uh, our character was kind of like of the model. Everyone made their own style of uh, candle and we, this was also um, trouble because we didn't have a character sheet at first and then at the end we did, when we did the polishing stage, we corrected them all. Like this was the after, this was the before, after, before. As you can see, it's a little bit of on the model. And we had the biggest problem in our movie. It is a baby. How do we animate the baby? Uh, it was a really big task for me. And I didn't know how should I approach that. And then somehow, miraculously, I became an uncle. And then when I first held my baby brother in my hands, everything just came to my, to my mind. And then every answer that I had was answered. And this was the result of that. Yeah, as you can see, this was our baby characters. These were all the animations. Yeah, like the baby movement is really chaotic, but it should be in order somehow. I don't know how to explain the baby's movement, but it's really chaotic, but in order. Like, <laughs> it's really hard motions. 
Okay, then we got into the polishing stage and everything you see here, I mean the VFX was made with a grease pencil. And after that, we faced another boss, which was the rendering part. I don't know which, what kind of rendering we were making back then. And we decided to do like a lot of takes. I thought the rendering was just a button at first. Like you just press the render and that's it. But apparently not, it kept crashing, it kept crashing, and at the final result, we decided to, to, to make in the PNG, but not in PNG, it was in Targa, I think. The file format was different. And then compositing. There was this thing called compositing, but I didn't understand that. But thankfully, we had a, we had a, a, we had a professional on that, and he tried to do everything what he could, and corrected everything. And this is what we did for the, um, for the shot. Like we were having a tune shader in this film, uh, just because it was tune shader uh, and we didn't know how to link the tune shaders, like linking the tune, linking the shaders itself was really problematic. And what we did was appending every kind of objects in the scene and tweaked everything by hand. And we had like 297 scenes in that film. Every, everything was done by hand. And this is what you see. Maybe this is what we call compositing. <laughs> I personally don't know about this. And yeah. Speaking of music and sound effects, uh, music was done by our composite, uh, composer. And sound effects was recorded with the Foley effects. We had um, our fully artist here. The, he did everything by hand, like the sounds of that uh, fully. I never understand that fully was really great in those films, but if you listen closely, you can feel it. The sound was really awesome. And here's the loot. Here's uh, some look in our film. This was the final results. I think the sound is off, okay. <laughs> but you get the idea. So the film was made like that. And that was, okay. Sorry, I need to cut here because I'm running out of time. So uh, we made the film and what did we learn? And what was the mission of the project? The mission of this project was to give warmth, to show that family warmth is getting fainter due to smart devices, like everyone just sits on their own and they don't communicate with each other so well. And the second one was inspire artists in Kazakhstan and unite them together to make something really bigger than this. And did we achieve this mission? Only time can tell because we just released this film to our YouTube channel, uh, but from the YouTube's um, comment section, we were seeing that everyone is eager to learn Blender and they want to make something extraordinary together as a united studio and they want to learn more. So that means, we're spread, that means we're spreading Blender in our country as much as we can. Uh, Sorry, one moment. So we had a little bit of technical pro troubles here. And what, we, what did we learn professionally? We learned that we should have a good pipeline at first. Tools are your friend, not your enemies. That means the, if it can give the result that you desire, you should use it. Don't give pre-production, ah, I mean give pre-production more time <laughs> because uh, the more you sharpen your ax, it's easier to chop down the tree. I mean, that's metaphorically. <laughs> Document the process because it might be handy in the future, uh, like it's the history. Know your team's strength 
you need to test out everything and you might be uh, missing out that someone might deliver something a lot more better than someone. Prepare, the, uh, prepare a character style sheet. That was a really hard thing to do at first. Know your characters well before animating. That means you should stick to the character's personality and never change it. Like, it shouldn't be uh, Murat's version of mine, Murat's version of someone else. It should be one character and only one character. Okay, uh, I wanted to show you the new project we've been working on, but not in this uh, slide. Can I open it from the computer itself? Is it okay? I think it's fine, okay? Okay. Okay, the next step. What were we busy with? I'm missing mouse. Okay, here's the mouse. Okay, where is it? Okay, here it is. Okay, as you can see, the resolution is kind of strange. Where is my mouse at? Okay. Bolam, <gülüyor> Yen de He's replaying. <laughs> okay, seems like he don't want to be. Just leave it there. Okay. Okay, this is the project called Solar Cats. I want to mention that this was made possible by the Dylan Goose Goo Engine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for making this project possible. And these shaders are all from there. And this, let, let me uh, premise this uh, project. It's about, uh, if in short, this is about the battle of the clean ecology comparing to the not so clean eco uh, ecology, energy, I would say. Uh, so these guys are for clean energy and this is our family, family of five. And they have some internal and external struggles. And if their internal struggles was uh, big and they don't agree with each other, their robot just gets kind of like crazy, like you've seen in the short um, teaser, I would say. So they have to be in united to fight properly. And this is what we're thinking like, maybe this would be work, uh, work good as a poster. And I think I don't have enough time, so I'll get to the next slides. Uh, we're also not limiting ourselves. We're making Golden Tights, which is the game that we're currently working on. It's also um, 
Adventure MOBA. And another question is, did we level up in the end? What we learned to level up? Okay. First of all is trust your team members and trust that someone else can take your work. Like you should delegate, mm, is that the right word? Delegate to the other persons, not take everything to your sh on your shoulder. You should spread the, uh, spread the work and do in team. That's why you can progress forward. Uh, the next one is every experience in life can be translated to your work. That means you should get out more, you should uh, live your life more, you should uh, treat your family more, and every single moment can be used for your work. And communication is the most important thing in the team. That's, that's for sure. We, every, everyone needs to be on the same page while we're working on the big projects. You'll unlock, <laughs> you'll unlock your full potential by doing a work that you love. That's what we learned and we still believe that's, that's correct. Uh, but making what you love comes with a price. Like <laughs> if you are sitting in the office all the time and no one knows you, like your family members don't know you, like <laughs> you get some kind of uh, disconnection of the reality. So you have to pay that price. I mean, uh, that doesn't mean you have to work every time, like you should focus on your work. No, I mean, you have to spend your uh, time correctly. Like give your, give your time to your family also, uh, like that, I mean. So, for the final word, I want to thank Blender team and Blender community. And everything... <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I would say uh, if there was, weren't a Blender community, we, couldn't, we, we wouldn't be standing here. And what I love about this community is we're like family. Like I yesterday felt that. Like I never saw any of your face, but I know you somehow from the internet or from your work and we're, we're like family members to each other. <laughs> when I, it's, it's so approachable and nice, you know? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Since this was my first Blender conference, it was really kind of emotional to me also. It was really a great experience. And seeing the, the person you adore or the person you respect in the, real, in the real life, it means a lot more than just um, online likes or tweets. It's like you're connected with the, with the souls because we're all in this together. Like we all believe that Blender can be used to free the artist's freedom. Like it's, it's used to free the artist's opportunity or skills, yeah, I should say. So thank you Blender and thank you everyone that worked on Blender and thank you for those who shares their work using Blender. And we learned a lot by looking at your works. And that's it. That was my talk. And contact us if you are interested. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>